Ever since I was a wee lad, I've always wanted to turn a whole chicken into a nugget. So today, in my adult life, at the ripe age of 29, we are going to finally make that dream a reality. If anybody ever asks me what I do for a living, I'll probably just send them a link to this video. <laughs> but we're gonna do things a little differently. I'm not gonna grind this meat up. We're gonna keep this chicken whole and intact, which means that we're gonna take all of its bones out while still leaving the meat perfectly in place. Let me show you. Obviously, this is a bone and skin on whole little guy. I'm gonna show you a cool way how to debone an entire chicken while keeping it together for whatever reason you'd wanna do that. Got the breasts up top, the legs right here, wings. We're gonna flip it around. Then you have the back. So I'm actually gonna start by slicing one time right down the middle here. Nice, sharp, bendy boning knife, you can see here. Got some flex to it, which is what we want. From here, you can see the spine and the skin underneath. I'm going to use my knife here to find right where the rib cage is and follow it down, opening up the back like so. See the skin, we're trying to keep that intact. It's very thin, you gotta be careful. We are going to take our knife, find the joint right here, paper extend it. And we're just gonna cut right through the joint. Look at that, so we have a nice disconnected thing. I'm actually just gonna take that and remove it. Bam, 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 bam. Same goes over this way. So, got our wings gone. Set those aside, do something different with them if you want. Now what we're gonna do here is release the thigh bones, right, that are connected at this joint here. Here, I'll flip the chicken for you. You can see the crevasse. Right, a little socket. So that allows us to open up the chicken. This is the carcass here. So I'm just going to continue releasing the breast from that carcass and the thighs as well. Like so. Mm -mm. There you go. That's the uh, backbone and the ribs and everything. Kind of a sloppy job, but this is really easy to fix. I'm going to cut down the wishbone right there. All right, now we got to remove these bones out of the thigh and the leg. So it's gonna go kind of like this L shape here. Take our knife, slide it right in, just one time, then slide it down. In case you haven't noticed, there's no pretty way to do this. I just gotta get this little thigh bone released here. So once you get to this point here, and you have your thigh meat released and the bones kind of down this way, I like to come through and just cut away all that sinewy cartilage skin. Same thing, cutting just right down to get rid of that thigh bone, drumstick, meat pile. So, though this probably looks like a mangled mess, and it is a mangled mess, you can notice if we flip it, our skin is intact here. So, essentially, this is, this is literally a chicken without any of its bones, right? You have your white meat breasts and your dark meat legs and thighs. So how are we gonna make this thing a whole nugget without actually grinding meat, you might be asking yourself. Well, I got something special for that. All right, this is called Transglutaminase, AKA TG, right? AKA meat glue. Meat glue is kind of like a slang way to say it, right? Usually in kitchens, you might call it TG. But essentially, this is going to bind proteins together and glue our meat together once it sets in the fridge. We're gonna take our meat, we're gonna flip it over, being careful not to ruin the skin, which we have left intact. We're just gonna take a little bit of our TG powder and sprinkle it over the top. You don't need a lot. If you're doing this at home, 1% weight of the meat, I'm just gonna, we're just, we're just doing it. Let's sprinkle a nice little even coat on. This should be more than enough. You really don't need a lot of this stuff. Just all over the inside here, like little snowflakes. Then, I got some plastic wrap here. Eh, eh. Plop our chicken right on top. And now we're just gonna ball it up into a nice nuggy. It doesn't have to be super neat. You can just kinda make it work. And how you're gonna hold it together is you're gonna take your corners and Straight up, give it a nice twisty twisty. You can do your best to make sure it's as neat as possible. It's not gonna be perfect, doesn't have to be perfect. Take some string here, tie it up. Fantastic. And just for insurance, to make it a little tighter, we're gonna hit it one more time in a little fresh piece of plastic wrap here. Same exact move, right? Make sure there's no air in there. Twist, 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 twist. Bam, that's our nuggy. To mold this bad boy, we're gonna place it upside down into a nice rounded bowl. Then we're just gonna take ourselves a nice plastic bag here, fill it with some agua, 
a little bit of water and we're just gonna weigh that right on top here like that. We have a little weight on, it's molded into this nice perfect shape, it's tied real tight. We're gonna set this in the fridge four to five hours but I just like to put it in there, let it chill overnight just to ensure it really adheres together, turns into a nugget, so in the fridge we go. Boom. To ensure this thing cooks evenly, right, obviously white and dark meat cook at different rates and uh, are best prepared at different temperatures. But to make sure that this is evenly cooked so that we don't have to cook it while we fry it, which would be pretty hard, almost impossible probably, we're gonna actually sous vide this thing at one static temperature for a few hours to ensure everything is perfectly juicy. It's actually a really cool technique because you can enjoy chicken at both uh, dark and white meat cooked perfectly together. So I got a nice little plastic bag here. Just gonna Take our molded chicken. Look at that. We're gonna plop that in the baggie. All right, chicken in the bag. Now we're just gonna sous vide it, AKA cook it in a water bath by plopping that in. Get that air out of there, naturally will happen. Just gonna clamp this puppy on. Boom, boom, boom. And then look how it's floating. We don't want that. We're gonna weigh it down with something heavy. In our case, a broken dinner plate. <laughs> Pop the lid on. So that's gonna go for anywhere between like, you know, four to five hours at 167 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gonna give us the perfectly cooked chicken. All right, so we've already butchered our chicken. We've glued it and sous vide it. Now we're ready to fry it. But before we do so, we gotta make a batter. I'm going for a batter that's crispy, a little shattery, almost kind of like glass, um, still tender. We're gonna do a couple of things to kind of ensure that that happens. All purpose flour, our main base. A little bit of cornstarch. This is going to give us a nice, crispy, glassy texture. Ooh, corn smoke. You picking that up? <laughs> our seasoning, some of that Lowry's all purpose from our previous video. This is over on Patreon if you want it. A little salt and pepper would work just fine too. I am gonna add a tiny bit more salt. Cold club soda. Teensy bit of vodka. And ice to make sure that the batter's cold, which will make everything crispier. So we add the, the vodka in there because it evaporates faster than um, straight up water, which will give us a lacier, crispier batter. The ice cubes are in here because colder batter, as it hits the hot oil, will kind of souffle a little bit, giving us a, again, lighter batter. And then the bubbles from the soda water, which I'm gonna add a little more of, will again make our batter a little airier and lighter. We don't want a super dense batter here. I want this to be not quite obviously fish and chips like, but you know, still on the more of the tempura side, a little delicate and glassy, still very crispy. If it gets too watery, just add a little more flour. If it's too thick, add a little more water or soda water. I want this to be kind of thick because we want it to adhere to the chicky nuggy nice, nice and good like. That looks great to me. Cool, check this out. So these are obviously the breasts here. Skin is still on, which is gonna get nice and crispy. And then we have the, the thigh meat sort of like underneath here. And I did go ahead with a knife and poke holes here just to kind of help the fat render out as it cooks. I already seasoned this and let it sit in the fridge, but I'm gonna hit it with a little more salt all over just to be sure. Nice big hunk of meat can take a lot of salt. I'm gonna coat it in a little more starch just to ensure that it's extra crisp black. We got a coated starched up nuggy. We're going in the batter. Oh yeah, that's nice thick batter. That's what we want, baby. Coat that nuggy. Coat that nug. Coat that nuggy. Give me a hug. Whew. I'm gonna transfer to spatula and slowly lower that in. Big moment. It is a big moment. Got some batter breakage. We're gonna perform a little bit of nuggy surgery right now. I'm just gonna take some batter and plop that right over that big crevasse. Put a rat back in, brother. See if that works. <laughs> Is it gonna work? I don't know. <sighs> All right, we'll take that. All right, so remember this nugget is completely cooked perfectly on the inside. So we're really only going for color and texture here. I don't think we're gonna need to deep fry this. It looks pretty nice and G-bizzle already and it's been like, I don't know, like 37.9 seconds or something, so not very long. But look at this color already. That's not, oh, look at that smooth batty. Even on the bottom, all right, cool. I'm gonna keep that in, take our little batter bits out. Mm, that's gonna be nice. 
All right, about three minutes have elapsed. Look at that. Oh, you can even see the skin bubbling underneath. Woo. <laughs> this is awesome and weird. That batter came out exactly how I wanted it to. That is my kind of mountain. This could be considered a holy site in some religions, I think. Now, every good nuggy needs a good sauce. And I went out and literally got a chicken sandwich just so that I could ask for extra Chick-fil-A sauce. I know, I know they sell it separately. Don't, don't question my ways. It won't make sense for you. <laughs> Unequivocally, the best sauce for chicken nuggets on planet Earth. If you disagree, let us know in the comments below. What's your favorite nuggy sauce? <clears throat> it's worth its weight in copper alloy. Is copper more expensive than like silver and gold right now? Somebody check the market. <laughs> Whoa. Look at this, look at this color. Everything's the same color. <laughs> Should we give this a go? I'm gonna give her a dippy. Give her a dunker on us. There's our nug. Listen to this really quick. That thing is glass. Cool. Oh yeah. How do you eat a nuggy? You bite right into it. Mm! All right, look at that. That's cool. That is both perfectly cooked breast, breast, perfectly cooked breast, perfectly cooked breast and thigh in the same nugget. You can see the dark meat versus the white meat, white meat. Dark meat. You got that shell, super crispy as you just heard. And if you don't believe me, that's fun. We're having a lot of fun here today. Mm. It's just perfectly cooked chicken in a fried glassy exterior sort of like armor with some really nice sauce. I mean, there's not really much more to say here. It worked and you, you know, you gotta have fries with the nuggies, right? Got some nice crispy shoestring fries. I think I'm gonna do a little dunk in the Chick-fil-A sauce. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's my nugget dance, dog. That was quite the poultry laden adventure, wasn't it, folks? Thank you so much for watching until the end here. If you liked the video or just thought it was weird and or interesting and or dumb and or you're sad for me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the party. We're hanging out, we're having a good time, we're doing weird, fun things. So stick around, subscribe. Hit the bell. Is the bell still a thing? Do people do the bell notifications? Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's still a thing? Hit the bell. Jingle that bell, my dog. Best way to support us is over on Patreon for literally $5 a month. You can get extra recipes, fun um, access to these cool giveaways. I'm giving away a lot of dope stuff. Access to exclusive merch, yada, yada, yada. It would help us out a lot. That's all I got for you this week. So until next time, cuckoo.